Hey there, folks. Welcome to episode 7 of Barry Science Lab Astronomy. Today's episode is very exciting because we're going to be talking about none other than the solar system. The solar system is, of course, very well known. We live in it. And there's eight planets. There's the gigantic sun holding us all together with its gravitational pull. There's the asteroid belt separating the inner terrestrial planets from the outer gas giants. There's the Kuiper belt outside of Neptune and the Oort cloud. So there's all of this beautiful, amazing structure in the solar system. In this video, we're going to be talking about how that structure came to be, discussing theories of solar system and planetary formation, and we're also going to be talking about what makes our solar system unique. In the last decade or two maximum, we've been looking at exoplanets and exosolar systems, and we've been seeing, hey, maybe these characteristics are what make our solar system unique and thus habitable for life. And thus, in this uh, video, we're going to be talking about the different factors that make our solar system uniquely suited to, uh, to be a boat for life. So, let's get started. And if you want to join me along for the ride, then buckle your seatbelts because we're going to explore the solar system. All right, folks, let's go ahead and check it out. <music> So let's start by establishing some basic facts about our solar system. First of all, 99% of the mass of our solar system is deposited inside one celestial object. You guessed it, that's right, the sun. Without the sun, 99% of the mass of the solar system would be gone. Okay, the closest thing to the sun in terms of mass is Jupiter. Uh, which is much smaller than the sun and has much less mass, of course. But that's the next best thing you have. Now, let's talk about, other than the sun, let's talk about the structure of the solar system. You have the four terrestrial rocky planets and you have the four gas giants outside of the asteroid belt. Okay, so those two types of planets, gas giants and rocky planets, are separated by this layer of asteroids. And then beyond Neptune, you have what's known as the Kuiper Belt, which is full of, you know, dwarf planets and asteroids and comets. And then even beyond the Kuiper Belt, you have another cloud called the Oort Cloud, where you have really, really cold, like, uh, rocks flying around. So that's the basic structure. Good question, Dad. So there's a few theories that uh, try to explain how the solar system formed, but perhaps the most important one is that of the planetary nebular disk. Okay, so what does that model say? It says that we began as a planetary nebular disk. And what happened was that there was a shock wave, a shock wave through space that may have caused that stellar nebula to start compressing, to start falling into its own gravitational weight. And so that nebula started shrinking and compressing and spinning because the angular momentum of the nebula increased as it became smaller and smaller and thinner and thinner and became flattening out. And so you had this spinning planetary disk. And so at the middle, when hydrogen and helium fused together, that's when you had the beginning of the sun, a protostar. And then planetesimals started forming. And then eventually planets as gravity began molding together rocks of space and dust. And that is the best theory we have for our solar system's formation. Good question. It turns out that our solar system is indeed pretty unique. In fact, that's why it may be an abode for life, uh, habitable for living creatures. Now, our solar system is unique in a few aspects, so let's talk about them. First and foremost, we have a sun, okay? And that sun is yellow. It's a yellow medium range star. And it turns out those are not too common, or at least not too commonly detected by our telescopes, which may have an observational bias because they often detect red dwarfs. Like Betelgeuse, oh, well, actually, that's a red giant, but red dwarfs are stars that are near the end of their life cycle. They're in their death throes. Or you may have blue giants like Rigel, completely insufficient for life. You may also have solar systems where there's huge planets like Jupiter, but that are much closer to the sun. So you call them hot Jupiters. And so 
our original ideas of solar system formation are now completely thrown off the block because now we see just how unique our solar system is because our solar system doesn't have these common planets like hot Jupiters or sub-Neptunes or super-Earths. Indeed, our solar system is turning out to be an anomaly in many respects because it has it's missing so many of those key characteristics of other exosolar systems. So those are some things that make our system unique.